I'm Jeremy Geffen, Executive and Artistic Director for Cal Performances, and it is a huge pleasure to have with me today composer and vocalist Masa Vadat and violinist and founder of the Kronos Quartet, David Harrington. Welcome. Thank you. So anytime Kronos returns to Cal Performances, it is a, a, an event. And uh, what I love particularly about your return this year is that you are bringing a project invo involving Masa um, in programs that speak, well, songs that speak to the theme of place and displacement that we have running through our current season. And I, I thought it would be interesting for our audience to hear um, from Masa um, directly uh, as to what what informed uh, these songs and uh, what what is behind them, though their obviously their aesthetic uh, beauty will be uh, it will be apparent to anyone who hears them. Thank you, and I'm so happy. Uh, I'm so looking forward to this concert, and thanks for inviting me and I'm so so happy to uh, do this concert again you know because uh, the, after corona you know most of our concerts were semi um, uh, online or yeah so it's it's really really and, and we didn't have a concert together I think from November since November 2019 together with Kronos and um, so um, the repertoire for for this uh, concert, uh, the parts that I, uh, the section that I take part is uh, uh, mostly from the uh, album Placeless that um, um, it was um, uh, released in 2019. And after two, two, two years of um, working together uh, with Kronos and, uh, and of course other arrangers and uh, the poems are from contemporary and old Persian poets and I'm so happy and privileged to bring this treasury to the world through music and also to the work we did uh, with uh, Kronos Quartet and the text uh, will be a start with the poem by Furukh um, Farrokhzad, uh, um, a poet. Uh, she, she passed away uh, more than 50 years ago and she's a very, very strong voice in, in our contemporary, um, uh, contemporary time. And uh, she expresses um, uh, her um, feminine um, desires in a very open uh, and direct way that also um, was very much she, she received a lot of criticism from the male dominant society and her um, her voice and her text really really resonates till now and it's a very very strong um, um, strong um, and important um, treasury and also I I am always very I'm very fascinated by the old and classical poets too and I sing some poems by Hafez and Rumi and uh, they are they they belong to 700 years or 800 years ago but but their messages are very very important now um, timeless and placeless you know their message are very very much timeless and uh, and they can speak to the heart of very many people in the world no matter where they are from so um, to bring their um, this treasury is really really fantastic through music and uh, also um, I will perform one um, one song one piece that we uh, recently released together with Kronos uh, Quartet uh, Vaya Vaya that's my my own text and it's a uh, uh, expression of love to a beloved that constantly transforms to homeland 
and um, that is something that we worked together uh, um, during the pandemic and uh, so we um, we worked and we recorded uh, separately and then it has been mixed and mastered and uh, I'm so happy that we did this um, this um, piece and, and also very thankful to uh, David for his love for this piece <laughs> and um, uh, so these are the, um, the pieces that we perform and um, they are um, um, arranged by Sahba Amini Kia and also Atobak Eliosi. Uh, and also I think we will perform uh, a Kurdish song uh, that is uh, most of the song that uh, we perform. Uh, I made the melody but this Kurdish song is an old uh, song. Mm. And um, yes, this is the, uh, the the repertoire that we are going to perform. Can I ask about the um, the name uh, of the album from which the, uh, much of this repertoire comes, um, "Placeless," and what uh, what it actually refers to? Uh, yes, "Placeless" is um, the, the name has been chosen because of the first uh, uh, first track of this album by Rumi. Um, it says that I'm not from, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not Muslim, I'm not Jewish, I'm not Christian, I'm not um, Zoroastrian, I'm not from the East, I'm not from the West, uh, I'm not from China, India, not from Persia, not from Babylon. Um, my, place my place is placeless and my trace is traceless. This, it, it has a, it has such a strong meaning and still it resonates you know in in in, in a world that we are um, you know mostly politician they try they try to um, politician or other forces they try to make us divided as human so this uh, this is this this has a very very strong message and uh, whenever I sing it or I read it again and again i find lots of um uh, fantastic layers in this uh, in this poem that speaks now for human being for any, from any places in the world uh, very profoundly mm -hmm. and uh, so um and the the process that uh, you know the process of making this cd also uh, i was very much involved with the with the uh, you know with my immigration and uh, sort of to, to change my home and also the longing that i had of course for my home and at the same time i was thinking that my real home can be my art and my uh, mm. voice this was something that very much it has you know um, all of the song that i chose uh, i chose for this project uh, together with my sister very much intentional and connected to part of our i don't know political emotional spiritual life and of course you know the way we worked together with chronos it was fantastic because the way they also responded um, masterfully uh, and you know with a very profound musical expression to the detail and to the nuance of our music and of our sense and of our it was really really fantastic um, process for for us <laughs> one thing that uh, that is uh, i think apparent to everyone who's uh, who's had contact with chronos is that the enormous curiosity uh, that that, that uh, David, that you and your colleagues have shown, and that you've introduced um, audiences to performers from many different traditions, um, and uh, uh, done so in such a, an organic and, uh, and and symbiotic way. I, I'm actually wondering how the the two of you became aware of each other. Well, um, it was. Our mutual friend, Saba Aminikia, who introduced me to Masa's voice. And one doesn't have to listen for very long to know the, um, just the, the strength 
and the power and, and the gentleness that Masa brings to everything she sings. And um, once we were able to meet and um, dis we both decided we'd like to make some songs together. And it was at a, a, a Kronos festival in San Francisco that we first performed together. And it, the, the, one of the things I love to do is when we find someone who magnetizes us, a, a composer, a performer, a singer, who, who we feel that we become more musical, more, we become better people, better musicians when we work with that person. What I want to do always is just keep expanding what we're able to do together. And that's what's been happening with uh, Masa for the last, I think, five or six years now. And we're, you know, we're talking about other uh, work that we're going to do in the future. And, and everything that we get to do together is, recon for me, is reconfirming um, just the, the rightness of that feeling that I first had uh, all those years ago. And um, so it's every time I get to, you know, do a Zoom call with Masa, there, uh, there's a smile inside of me. <laughs> I, just, I just feel better, you know what? And that, that's the kind of work and the kind of person that I want to bring on the stage with Kronos and present to our audiences. And um, so we're really looking forward to the uh, work we get to do uh, at, at UC Berkeley. <clears throat> And Masa, had, uh, had you um, heard of Kronos uh, uh, before you started working together? Yes, yes, I, and I, I admired them so deeply. And, uh, and of course, it was a really, really big privilege for me to work with them. They are like um, uh, wayfarers in music that I, I really, really love this attitude in music. So, so profound, so amazing and uh, and when i worked started to work uh, you know and then developed and developed i felt that how how we can uh, work that much organically i sometimes i could hear some part of my voice or um, i don't know layers of my emotion in their bowing you know this was something amazing and uh, yes, I, I, it was fantastic. And it, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy uh, that this uh, collaboration, very precious collaboration happened in my life. Really, really. <laughs> how, how beautiful. Um, and uh, David, on this program, there are also some other fellow travelers of yours. Um, uh, one who, with whom your relationship goes back decades and and one more recent collaborator who is currently cal performances artist in residence uh, angelique kidjo i i wanted to see if you could speak a little bit about angelique and also about your relationship with terry riley well um angelique we we have uh known now for about 10 years and she uh, appeared on a festival that we were doing in uh, Lincoln Center out of doors. We appeared on an album of hers. I've been following her music for a long time. And it seemed like Angelique would be a great person to write a 50 for the future piece for Kronos. And what that really means is you're writing a string quartet for all quartets in the whole world is what it really means. <laughs> and uh, so we're still in the process of putting Angelique's piece together. You're going to get a mint condition musical experience. <laughs> That's what a world premiere is. And, um, and then so far as Terry Riley, um, what can I say about Terry? Uh, we've worked together for 44 years, 40, 43 years. 
And Harry has written, I think, 25 pieces over those years for Kronos. And um, I feel like we've grown together in so many beautiful ways. And, and the, I can't wait to play Terry's newest string quartet for our audience in Berkeley because it's, it could only be written by somebody of his experience and of his age. And it has this youthfulness that is so beautiful and, and, and this um, comfortableness of movement between areas of life and music. I, I think it's going to be uh, a magical collection <laughs> for the audience to hear of us moving from various of our most recent pieces, many of which are written by singers, by the way. <laughs> so uh, Angelique and um, a piece that we just premiered the other night by, by uh, Penny Condrarini from Java and moving into actually bringing a voice on stage and not just any voice, but Masa, Masa's voice on stage. Um, for me, it's, it's like a dream come true. And, you know, one thing that singers don't realize, and I, I don't think I've ever said this to Masa, but we try to, to, to have the essence of whatever vocalists we're working with, whether it's Tom Waits or whether it's, uh, um, who else can I think of, Tanya Tagak. Um, I, I could go on and on about different singers, but we try to have that sound in our bow arms, that sound of the voice. And so hopefully there will be these moments where you can't tell, is it Kronos, is it Masa? <laughs> that Masa is at Kronos. To me, those are the magical moments. And we're looking for those in, in every time we get to perform with a singer. <laughs> you know, uh, as you were speaking, David, it, it made me think that you are so often working with um, many more unknowns than other performers, uh, that much of the music that you program may not have actually been written by at the time that you program it. Um, <laughs> um, but that there is always this, um, this beautiful journey that, that it, somehow everything winds up in in the right place and the program uh, through as if through some sort of divine intervention, uh, uh, make it makes it, it makes far more sense than one could ever have expected it to. Um, well, what we try to do is make educated guesses about <laughs> what somebody might write six months from now, or, uh, you know, what I'm saying is, it's like, you have to kind of go for it. And I just got off the phone with a, with a, a composer and talking about a program we're going to play, and I tried to describe where her music will be on this program and the feeling I want the audience to, to get. And so the older I am, the more I realize that we're almost like we're, we're creating these musical meals or these musical uh, flower displays. I, I don't know what you call it, but it's, it's something that's living and it, it needs to be responsive to what surrounds us, you know, so environments, let's call them environments, musical environments. <laughs> well, uh, I think you've just encapsulated the, uh, uh, the miracle that, it, uh, that is Kronos. Um, and, Thank you, Jeremy. Um, I'm so greatly looking forward uh, to, to hearing you here. You're, you're both Bay Area uh, residents, so, so it's, it's lovely to be able to have a, a performance where there are no planes involved and certainly no visas. Right. <laughs> uh, and I look so forward to de uh, December 2nd. Yes. Thank, Thank you for your time.
My Thank pleasure. You. Asa, can't Thank wait you. to see you. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff.